In this video, we're going to talk about where the Forta Wi-Fi slash Forta Gate 30E might, might fit in your network and whether or not you should get one. So whether or not a Forta Gate or Forta Wi-Fi 30 is good for you depends on very specific items. For instance, you need to really assess your network and say, is it worth it to cut myself short hardware wise and spend maybe a hundred bucks less or 200 bucks less and have a device that's going to be handicapped overall. Here's what I mean by that. For starters, the FortiGate 30E only has roughly 0.95 gigabits per second worth of firewall throughput. That means that if you're not doing any UTM, any threat management at all, that's all you're going to be able to push through it. It's not a whole lot of bandwidth to begin with. With home internet connections being over a gigabit these days, I mean, hell, I have gigabit fiber without even trying here at the house. It's 0.95 gonna be enough, especially if you're using it as a central hub where all it does is, you know, switch and route and then send it out. You might as well just get a little home rinky dink router for that. So, if your environment is extremely small, and the only purpose you're gonna use this thing for is just natting and routing, and your internet connection is probably slower than what most people in relatively large cities have these days, then sure, maybe 0.95 gigabits worth of firewall throughput will be enough for you. But then you have to follow up the fact that it only handles 75 megs of IPsec throughput, which means if you're gonna be building site-to-site -site tunnels on this thing, you have, you have a limit there. It's gonna slow you down. Um, most times, especially with folks working from home, they're gonna end up in a situation where they want as much bandwidth as possible on both ends and the tunnel to actually operate at that speed so they can do their work effectively. Now, thanks to the newer chips and things that are running in these devices, obviously IPS and next-gen firewall capabilities are gonna be a little bit higher. It can do 300 megabits of intrusion protection, which is, pretty sound. That's actually on par with the 60E and some other devices that used to be significantly beefer than the 30 series. Uh, it can do 200 megabits of actual next-gen firewall throughput. That's really good. That's a good for a small, you know, Soho environment, small office, home office setup. 150 megabits worth of threat protect. Again, that's a good number. That works. Um, Limitations, especially if you're using it for a home office where you also want it to double for uh, your home's overall Wi-Fi management. It can only control two access points and that's total. That's not bridge mode slash tunnel mode, that is total. And it can control up to eight four switches, but you don't want to do that. So in short, where does the FortiGate 30E meet? as far as you know, environments that it's suitable for, maybe a small home office where you're gonna do nothing but web surfing with very minimal threat protection or um, an environment where you're not gonna have VLAN so it doesn't have to do firewall throughput, it's just straight switching. Those are gonna be the ones that put the most use to it. Is it good for a fallback in situations where you have maybe a small office that has secretaries and people doing office work? Sure, it'll work okay there, but it's only got four ports so you're gonna to have to chain either a regular switch or a Ford switch off of it anyways. So that being said, I would personally avoid it. My motto is always to go with the 60 or higher model. I run an 80E at the house, but I do have the PoE version and I have multiple access points throughout my house, multiple drops throughout my house. So that makes a little bit more sense for me. Obviously mileage will vary, but if you're looking at doing something whether it be, you know, a small office, home office, tread lightly. The 30E is an entry level unit that's more so for getting your feet wet. The moment you get a taste for that Fortinet device where you actually want to use layer seven capabilities, application control and things of that nature, that's where you're going to run into a situation where you wish you had more. If you like this video, check in and click subscribe on the bottom as well as the notify button. I'm gonna start pushing out videos on a regular basis to help keep guys up to date with what they need, what they 
should do and things of that nature, uh, strictly based on my life experience. I've been in situations where I didn't have a strong enough firewall, and that's not just a Fortinet related item. I've had Palo Altos that were too small, Sophos devices that just didn't function because of the way they were configured. So I'm trying to push that knowledge out, help people overcome the obstacles and avoid them, hopefully, that I used to run into on a regular basis as a consultant. Check in next time, and until then,